Democracy Under Attack presents A Sharia Scoreboard Tutorial DemocracyUnderAttack.org Key Spokesperson for Sharia Law in the United States Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf of the Ground Zero Mosque The man behind the proposed mosque is Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf who has been portrayed in the press as a moderate Muslim. But on September 30th, 2001, just 19 days after the 9-11 attacks, the late Ed Bradley interviewed the Imam on 60 Minutes. Are you in any way suggesting that we in the United States deserved what happened? I wouldn't say that the United States deserved what happened. But the United States policies were an accessory to the crime that happened. Note Imam Rauf's 2004 book title in English, What's Right with Islam is What's Right with America. And in Malay, the call from the WTC ruins Islamic Dawa from the heart of America post 9-11. President Obama defends Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf's Ground Zero Mosque. So I understand the emotions that this issue engenders. And Ground Zero is indeed hallowed ground. But let me be clear, as a citizen and as president, I believe that Muslims have the right to practice their religion. Problem, the Sharia law of Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf is much more than just religion. Frank J. Gaffney Jr., Center for Security Policy org. And, and I'll go to Frank Gaffney. Frank, he wants a judiciary within a judiciary, Sharia courts, in other words, in the United States. How are we to know which Sharia law he's referring to here? Sean, thanks so much for focusing on this, because, you know, the, the idea that this is really all a question of about religious tolerance is nonsense. Sharia is about power. It is about political control. Uh, this is the face of Sharia, and it is a horrific thing wherever it is applied authoritatively. And our concern is that when Abdul Rauf talks about bringing it to America, he has in mind bringing the practice, the true, the one Sharia practice that is in accordance with the traditions, the institutions, the uh, interpretations of the faith. And anyone who tells you that um, there are other kinds of Sharia and that they're not so bad, I think is either misleading you or misleading themselves. And Sean, you're exactly right. These are examples of intolerance. These are examples of sort of a barbarism and totalitarian quality to this political program. It's not about faith or religion or tolerance. It is about power and control, and it must not be allowed to come to America. Joel Richardson, joelstrumpet.com. The New York City World Trade Center towers, a symbol of American, indeed international prosperity and Western ideals, attacked on September 11, 2001 by radical Islamic ideologues who purported to maintain a system of values consistent with their faith in the Quran. The system of values is called Sharia law. It is a comprehensive system of laws. Sharia deals with many topics addressed by secular law, including crime, politics, economics, and sexuality. Primary public discussion often focuses on radical Muslims, those that are willing to utilize violence or murder to further their causes. But when we limit the discussion to these issues, we miss the larger issue, which simply is this which Muslims desire and are working toward the implementation of Islamic Sharia law, a system of laws which is fundamentally at odds with the U.S. Constitution and all of the values and principles that have made this country such a great country. Principles such as human rights, freedom, civil liberties, and equal rights for minorities. The fact of the matter is, is that these are the principles that have made our nation such a great shining example throughout the world that has elevated the human condition. We are a people that are tolerant. We are people that are open. But when we elevate this principle of tolerance and openness above the principles of freedom, then we welcome in that which is fundamentally acidic, corrosive, and destructive to those things which we all value so deeply. So if you're looking at an individual such as Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, 
in his book or in his lectures, he is clearly a man who is pro-Sharia law. He desires to replace the U.S. Constitution and the American system of laws with Islamic Sharia law. This is an individual, whether he is violent or not, whether he speaks peacefully or not, who is a fundamental enemy of everything that Americans hold so dear. If they are in favor of Islamic Sharia law, as opposed to U.S. constitutional law, they are just as much enemies of the United States as Osama bin Laden. Dr. Zudi Jasser, an anti-Sharia Muslim, the Third Jihad dot com. I think the New York City Muslim Day Parade is a perfect microcosm of Muslim representation in America. You had a majority of Muslims that were of all races, creeds, and heritage that were celebrating their country and uh, were clearly proud of being American. I live in America, I work in America, I sleep in America, I was born in America, I love this country. But unfortunately, there are also those Muslims that hold more radical views. Islam will dominate. That's what it will be. These groups are not Al-Qaeda, they're not Hamas, they're not Hezbollah, and most of them are nonviolent. But they still want to replace American law with their version of Sharia, Islamic law. We want to see Sharia here, and it will be. The flag of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, will be, inshallah, on the White House if that's what we choose to be. It just takes time. The American people are waking up now. Allah does say that the whole world eventually will be under his, his ruling. The world will come down to where everybody obeys uh, the laws of God. Simple as that. When groups like these talk about wanting to create a global Islamic state and Islam dominating the world, you realize that they hold some of the same goals as Al-Qaeda and millions of radicals around the world. And that's what makes them dangerous. There's no compulsion in Islam. That means we can't force it on you. But we will force Islamic Sharia, inshallah. They are in favor of a system of laws that is contrary to all of the values that we value so deeply here as Americans that have made our culture so great a value for human life, a value for human rights, a value for freedom. This is something that Americans cannot tolerate. And yet these individuals are treated as legitimate voices within the American debate. When you look at any nation, any nation throughout the world that has attempted to implement Islamic Sharia law, they are demonstrably among the worst violators of human rights in the earth, whether it be Saudi Arabia, Iran, or Afghanistan under the Taliban, these nations crush the rights of women, children, and non-Muslims. This is the result. This is the fruit of Sharia law. Wafa Sultan, Syrian-born author, psychiatrist, and activist. I was born and raised as a Muslim, and I spent 32 years of my life living under Islamic Sharia. So I know what it means to be a woman living under Islamic Sharia. And what is it like? We have no rights. We are treated as second-class citizens Go because ahead. a woman is not a full person. We don't have the mental ability to control our life. So it, our life has to be controlled by a male in our family. This is what we hear. Women in Saudi Arabia have to deal with the morality police. They can't be seen in public with men that they're not related to. Women can't drive. Uh, we see that women under Sharia are stoned to death. Women that are raped must have four male eyewitnesses. Uh, this is Sharia law, as it is applied in reality in countries all around the world. So this imam wants America to be Sharia compliant. What, what, is, what is he saying when he says that? As Americans who stand on the values and the principles of freedom and human rights, we cannot tolerate this system of laws which is fundamentally at odds with everything that we hold so dear, that is fundamentally at odds with the United States Constitution. 
whether Democrat, Republican, conservative, or liberal, we can all agree that these are issues that need to take the highest priority in terms of the American discourse. There is a syntax error that occurs in the minds of most Americans in popular American thought which essentially says that Islam is only a religion, whereas in fact it is more than just a religion. Islamic Sharia law is a comprehensive system of living that includes cultural, political, legal, governmental, and a financial system of mandatory laws and punishments. It is precisely through the imposition of Sharia law that the radical Islamists intend to forcefully impose submission onto all the nations and peoples of the earth. In Arabic, the word Islam does not mean salam or peace. Islam in Arabic means submission. President George W. Bush did a great disservice to the U.S. and went a long way in establishing this syntax error in the American mindset. And we need to alert the people to the true intentions of the Islamists, those radical followers of Muhammad who proclaim Sharia law as their chief objective. This includes individuals such as Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf. But Imam Rauf of New York City is not the only outspoken proponent of Sharia law. In fact, throughout the United States, there are many accepted Muslim leaders who are proponents of Islamic Sharia law. It's very clear. We've heard it so many times from many Muslim leaders that they want to Islamize the world. پیام جهانی است در جغرافیا و زمان محدود نمی شود تردید نکنید که ان اسلام همه مجاور فت خواهد کرد همه قله های قد حکمنا الدنيا وسياتي يوم والله نحكم فيه كل الدنيا سياتي يوم نحكم فيه امريكا سياتي يوم نحكم فيه بريطانيا ونحكم فيه كل العالم as concerned Americans learn about Sharia law, it will become apparent by the speeches in both English and Arabic of certain public figures as to where their alliances lie. This is why Democracy Under Attack has created the Sharia scoreboard, so that concerned Americans can vote for people who understand these issues. Although not all of the following examples of Sharia law are being practiced in the U.S., many in fact are being followed to the letter in American Muslim communities the requirement of women to obtain permission from their husbands or fathers for daily freedoms, the beating of disobedient women and young girls and children, the execution of homosexuals, the execution or the systematic persecution of those who leave the religion of Islam, the engagement of polygamy and forced child marriages, in clear contradiction to the laws of the United States. Issues such as the stoning of adulteresses, the amputation of body parts for criminal offenses, capital punishment for those who slander the Prophet of Islam, the inferior status for all referred to by Islamic law as dhimis. Underlying all of these laws is the concept of al which essentially gives a Muslim permission when he is in a country where Muslims are a minority to lie or deceive non-Muslims for the purpose of advancing or protecting the cause of Islam. Already, Democracy Under Attack Coalition has sent three questions via both fax and hand delivery on Capitol Hill. Go to democracyunderattack.org to learn more about Sharia law and to see where your elected officials stand on these three issues. Opposition to Sharia, Islamic law, becoming a separate legal system in the United States. Senate hearings to investigate the infiltration and practice of Islamic Sharia law in our communities. And an annual congressional study investigating the infiltration and spread of Islamic Sharia law in all of the 50 states. 
This is why Democracy Under Attack has created the Sharia Scoreboard, so that concerned Americans can vote for those who understand these issues so critical to national security this coming November. Go to democracyunderattack.org to learn more about Sharia law and to see where your elected officials stand on these three issues.